Baseball's awesome. It, it is. The sport itself is just awesome. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins right where you found this. But this one, this one is about baseball. This episode will be about the beauty of baseball. And it comes in the strangest, most surprising places, such as, say for example, a Sunday afternoon in Pittsburgh between two teams that are a mile apart in the standings, that are a mile apart in recent history, to say the least, of the chasm that exists between the Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. But on this day, with the home team barely able to muster a hit, three total singles all in the same inning, which somewhat humorously only resulted in one run, Nothing doing. Nothing. It was the most foregone conclusion of a feeling that you could have in watching a sporting event. When the Cardinals took that 3-1 to one lead into the ninth inning. And then Brian Reynolds walks. And you think, ah, uh, so what? Of course they're walking Reynolds, you know? Everyone should walk Reynolds. Reynolds should never see a pitch to hit, given the lineup that he's in. Colin Moran comes up and strikes out. Now you're sure. Now you're reaching for the keys. You know, that's it. It is really over. Jacob Stallings comes up, and you're thinking, you know, Stallings, he's had some pretty dramatic hits and everything, but he's fallen off offensively for a while now. And you're not really thinking much of anything other than if he hits a ground ball to somebody with his cheetah-like speed, this is going to be over even sooner than we thought. And he works a walk. And then Yoshi Tsutsugo comes up. And this is St. Louis's closer pitching, Alex Reyes. Guy's got pretty good stuff. He hasn't been great for them of late, but, you know, he didn't get to be their closer for nothing. Tetsugo, of course, has set the universe on fire since the Pirates picked him up. He's been with the team for two weeks, and he had four home runs in his first 24 at-bats. That's, that's a pretty impressive ratio there, you know? One of every six times up, he's been hitting the ball over the wall. And it crosses your mind. You know, you start thinking about it a little bit. But not really. You know, not really. Because the other thing is, he's hit all these home runs in a bunch, and he's not going to keep doing that. You know, that's also part of the reality. So this setup is happening, and I take a moment from the press box to just kind of look around and see who still stuck it out, you know? Who hung around for all this? The announced attendance was just a hair over 10,000, but that doesn't mean anything. That's For anybody who doesn't know how Major League Baseball does this, and all 30 teams do it the same way, it's tickets in circulation. It means tickets that were purchased and exist somewhere. That's what attendance is when they announce it. It's not turnstile count. Every team knows turnstile count. None of them announce it. In fact, there are only two teams in all of professional sports that still do turnstile account. They're both in the NFL. It's the Steelers and the New York Giants. Just a little bit of parenthetical trivia for you. Anyway, I look around to see how many people stuck it out. Most of the people who did, not all, but most, were wearing red and they were over on the first base side and they were getting kind of amped up. You know, this is, this is a big deal for them. Their next series is in Cincinnati against the Reds, the team they're chasing, just a couple of games behind them in the wild card. And this is this is really, really cool for them. You know, their team had played some really good ball 
including in this game. Two of the better defensive plays we'd seen all summer long at this place were turned in by Harrison Bader in center field and Nolan Arenado at third base. Just gorgeous defensive gems. But now it came down to this. It came down to this. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by the good people at the North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home of Steak on a Stone, home of the planet's only fully dedicated sports bar to the Pittsburgh Baseball Club and its 135-year history. Wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling, amazing stuff there and an amazing atmosphere, including for when the Pirates are on the road, which they are this coming week, with six games in Chicago against the White Sox and the Cubs. Head on down the North Shore Tavern. Watch a game with friends. You don't have to ask anyone to put the TVs on baseball down there. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Everything is now condensed to this at bat. And the strategy part starts taking over your mind. I like to think about it from both standpoints. You run out of time, usually, but it's fun. In Derek Shelton's case, he's got no move to make. None whatsoever. Yoshi is exactly the guy you want heading into that box. The guy on deck is Cole Tucker. So I'm now switching sides and thinking from the St. Louis perspective that Mike Schilt, man, dude, <laughs> you know, if you could if you could confidently put Yoshi on base and pitch to Cole Tucker with the bases loaded, yes, in hindsight you'd do it a hundred times out of a hundred. But that's not the way the game is played or managed. So what does he do? What does he do? Well, he's got no choice either. He doesn't. His closer's on the hill. And he's not going to walk the bases loaded with one out. So here it comes. Here it comes. And you know what? There it went. Because Reyes threw a first pitch slider, which was dumb. Schilt would later criticize this pitch selection, which you would have to presume emanated from Yadier Molina behind the plate, but can't know that. Yoshi's had trouble with the higher velocity that he's faced in his year in North America, and he's acknowledged that. The stats bear it out. But somebody on that side called for a slider. What they didn't call for was a slider that stayed up and right over the plate. And there it went. The instant the ball goes off the bat, the game is over. For anybody who was inside that ballpark, it wasn't one of those, gee, I hope it gets out kind of things. It was instant. If you've ever been to a ball game where there was a walk-off home run and it was instant, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, about what it was like for those people in there who did stick it out, who were rewarded for putting up with three hours of relative nothingness in advance of that. It was beautiful. It was unlike anything that happens in other sports. And I'm not being excessively dramatic when I say this. Listen, just just for fun, listen to the first few words of Derek Shelton's post-game press gathering before there was even any questions. This was just the man walking into the room and sitting down at the table. That was fun. (laughs) Fun. Wow. 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 Our bullpen was outstanding, man. Really kept us in the game. And uh, I think like we've talked about numerous times, our guys don't give up. And to to, you know, win that game today and come back against a team like that, that's uh, that's big steps for us. And those are important. 
That's a lifer. That's somebody who's been at this forever. And he was moved by it. Yeah, in every sport you can come from behind. But this, this is one swing, one moment, and an entire event gets turned upside down. That's baseball. That's just one of many, many things that make it the game that it is. When we come back, just one question. It's time for just one question, and today's comes from Jeff Hoffman, who asks, Dayan, I watch these teams in our division, and I don't see much talent. Is it possible for the Pirates to be somewhat competitive next year? Can we be closer to 500? Jeff, I agree with you about the Central Division. What makes me a little nervous about your question is the last part of it, as well as the fact that you sent it to me after this game ended yesterday, okay? Which tells me that you looked at that game and said, aha, the Cardinals aren't all that great. Well, the Cardinals aren't great. You know, they've been hovering around 500 for the better part of the year, and they're still technically, mathematically, whatever it is, hopefully, I guess, from their point of view, chasing the Reds for the wild card spot. But I don't look at the Reds and the Cardinals and say this is the class of the division, and I definitely don't look at head-to-head matchups, much less in isolation, and say, oh, see, the Pirates can play with these guys. Because the fact of the matter is, the Pirates had a winning record this season against the very best team in all of baseball, the San Francisco Giants, and in fact, really outclassed them in most of those games. So you can't do that. You can't do that in baseball. There are so many things that change, so many variables in the mix, notably as it relates to starting pitching, but also as it relates to injuries, availability, and other stuff. So I I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. However, to your initial point, I'm with you on a lot of levels. The Brewers are the best team in the Central. The Brewers will have earned this division title. Good for them. The Brewers don't exactly have a loaded system, and the Brewers definitely don't have the finances to compensate for that. So they had better do well with this opportunity that they're getting, that they've earned. I don't see the Brewers as being any kind of sustained powerhouse. The Reds... Man, what do you do with the Reds? How do you ever analyze the Reds? The Reds always think that they're a big spending team and they take big spending approaches, but that does not work there. It does not work in this sport. The next team to pull that off will be the first because they don't have enough to adopt that approach exclusively, which is pretty much what they do. And it makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. It's like they're trying to win talk shows in December. But again, they've had a decent enough year. They get into the wild card, they'll have earned that. They're not in a position to sustain anything in the longer term either. The Cardinals, you know, they're the Cardinals... Until proven otherwise, the Cardinals will always be in the hunt. The Cardinals will always be there. And you know what? Not a lot's gone right for them this year. And tip the cap, they're still somehow in it entering September. My goodness, if if you'd seen the reaction of Mike Schilt, St. Louis's manager, after this game, dude was devastated. I mean, they took this hard really hard. And have you heard the play-by-play 
Have you heard the play-by-play from the St. Louis announcer that went viral afterward because of how completely despondent he sounded? Here, listen to this. Sutsugo launches one out to deep right. It stays fair and gone. The Pirates win it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Oh, no. The humanity. The tragedy. But you know what? That's that's reflective of the expectation there among people inside the Cardinals and the people who follow them. They expect that team to be a contender every year. You never hear about a rebuild there. So I always presume the Cardinals are going to be in any kind of mix, whether it's in the near-term future or long-term future, because they're just the Cardinals. And then there's the Cubs, who basically just sold off everybody. The Cubs look like they're going to be dragging for a while. You know, they're doing one of those build-from-the-bottom things, which, you know, even though they have a lot of money, that was kind of how they won their one World Series. You know, they sold off a bunch of parts, built up with prospects, and what do you know, a hundred-year-old curse was blown away. But overall, man, I, I'm totally with you on this, Jeff. I, I I don't think the Central is going to be any kind of powerhouse, to say the least, and I don't think you're going to see the teams that can really, really out-money the Pirates, and I mean in some dramatic sense, do that within the Central. And that does matter in a sport that's got such ridiculous economic imbalance. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs>